Southeast Miami has the highest over under 44 and a half. They were 44 and 38 last year. I got to say, this is an inexplicable over under to me. And I think there's a lot of disrespect to a Miami team that I know I'm Dr. Loomis in, in the Halloween franchise, just warning people about Michael Myers every year. But man, this team. So they lose Struess and Vincent and they don't get Dame. And the natural instinct is to go, ah, write them off. They're done. Well, they're fucked. I think they're fine. And I think, I think Hero, I love every single quote I've read from him from the past two months. He's fucking pissed that he was in trade rumors all summer. I think he is the number one chip on the shoulder guy in the league right now um, for maybe not the talent of some of these other dudes. But I think this is, I think he's approaching this like, I want to show everybody night after night that I can't believe Portland was like, nah, that's not enough. Um, Lowry's in a contract year. Jimmy Butler is in his, you know, he's about to hit his mid thirties. And, you know, I think he likes, considers himself now as one of the best guys in the league, which he should. But Hawk has coming in. Duncan Robinson, who they're able to resuscitate. People like Jovic. I think Rosillo likes Jovic. They still have Bam. They still have Jimmy. They got Caleb Martin with some real sea legs under him now. I think this team's going to be pretty good. I think, to me, this is like a mid to high 40s for me. And uh, I didn't even really blink. What'd you have, House? Well, the the win total is 44 and a half, and they won 44 last season. But their uh, uh, expected wins based on point differential was was they had a negative point differential because they won all those games in the clutch. So the, you know, but they that's were, part of what makes them the Heat is they they're top, smarter than everybody else. They have a and they top win ten games. defense every year. That's yeah. why because they have a top ten defense. Every they year. have the best coach in the league. I'm not so sure that a motivated hero is is what this team wants or needs. So. I'm talking regular season only. I understand. I'm just trying to win regular it's season. It's just hard wins. for hero like to go, I can't believe all the disrespect, but it's like they made that run without you. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, but still. <laughs> I'm just like, who, who says no? Hero for Harden. I would do it if I were Philly. I mean, but again, who are you asking here? It, you know. To me, I'm trying to get if I if if I'm trying to get Harden, if I'm Miami, that's Lowry for Harden, and I'll I'll wow, throw in dude. something else. Good luck, Lowry no, but I'm I'm not Lowry and up, Robinson. I'm just not giving up Hero for one Here, here's year. Here's what James sucks. Harden. Here's what sucks for Miami is they spent all summer thinking this was going to happen. But although I don't think it to the level of like clearly when the July conversation happens at summer league where they're not even close, and you know on the initial conversation. But by the way, it was, it, was early, it was late June. It wasn't even July where they think Dame is headed their way, probably starting around the draft. Yeah, after the so draft, like but Ju then June twenty eighth. But there's like a couple different times in the timeline there where then they're like they met in Vegas, and then it was like, wait, you're asking for Bam again? Because I always felt yeah. like, hey, don't. There was a bunch of Miami stuff after the fact of like, oh, well, they weren't serious; they were asking for Bam. Like, have you ever heard about a Daryl Morey trade rumor request? Yeah. Like, it's a lot of these guys, this is how they operate. They start there. Now, if Portland had its own motivation to not want to do it, you know, we've already been over this a million times, but. The backcourt situation for them, I, look, it's an over for me. They they mailed it in last year and got to 44 wins, okay? So that's the number, and it's the division. And so you're like, look, Butler is older. I think Lowry's kind of close to toast. I mean, he had a couple nice playoff moments, but, I mean, what are you really penciling in there? Because they did all this waiting, and, I, you know, again, I don't know at what point they realized they were probably out of it. They missed out on other options, and then, you know, Struess is gone, Vincent is gone. They can replace Struess with, with Robinson. Struess was nice for him. Though. I know he and, was. And but like, I mean, there's they, a reason on Struess paper, is, you can replace him. Sure, but there's a reason why Struess was playing over him because yeah. Duncan felt like somebody that could be targeted uh, despite when he does have it going offensively. Like, he had some really nice possessions for him last year. So, look, it's it's an over for me, but I'm not going to beat myself over the head saying I have to put them as a Tier 1 East team with the other teams up there. House, I love the chip on the shoulder, not just with Hero, but with this whole team, where it was like, they didn't get Dame throw them in the fucking dumpster. And I think they thrive on that and they care about it. And uh, I'm just not writing them off. I'm not. The, the the single biggest factor for me is Spolstra. Yeah. He, he, we just took, a, you know, a two-month tour with that dude. We just watched him do it to yeah. us right in our face for two months. So 
Yeah. Would you? All right. So say they had gotten Dame. That means Milwaukee's the same. It means Boston's the same. Who would you pick to win the East? What do they get? So if it's Lowry and picks, and they turn that into Dame. No, no hero. hero, hero. I'm I'm sorry, hero and picks. Yeah, yeah. They do the deal that everybody might. The problem does. is the deal wasn't perfect because they still needed to match the Dame number, and and the part everybody forgets with Portland when they talk about what they got back, they wanted to get rid of Nurkic. That was part of it. So his Dame plus Nurkic was like sixty eight million. Well, so it also now, made zero sense for Sharp, Simon, and Scoot to be closing a game with Hero. Right. I'm just saying in a vacuum, like yeah. Miami would have had to take Nurkic back in the trade with Dame. All right. Which so, means they had to, they would have to do Hero and Lowry and Jovic and all their picks. Which they or, could have figured like, out a way to do. But I'm just saying like if Miami has Dame and whatever pieces around I it. I probably would have, I, I probably would have. Still pick Milwaukee or Boston? Yeah. Huh. Me too. Yeah. Because I think they, the stuff they would have had to give up, I'm not positive that would have cemented it. But who knows? Um, we'll still hear from, hear from Miami this year because they still have their picks. They have that Lowry expiring, which they can get a whole bunch of things back. I think this is a possible Harden team. Um, we'll see how it goes. Also, I'm not ruling out Donovan Mitchell for this team. Interesting. I'm just not. Uh, I would add to that, like once they'd missed out on Dame and then it was like this list of all these players Riley couldn't get, I felt like that was getting a little unfair. It's like, well, because... Riley's, Riley got LeBron and Wade in the same summer. And Riley pulled off Jimmy Butler and I'm still trying to figure out how he got Jimmy Butler for Josh Richardson and, and Hassan Whiteside and a couple picks. Like, how the fuck did that even happen? Um, Mitchell for a hero and a bunch of picks, if the Mitchell thing goes sideways. I still feel like it's sitting there. The Atlanta Hawks, 41 and a half, plus 220 for the division. 49 to one to be the one seed. That seems tough. Minus 200 for the playoffs. They were 41 and 41 last year. And Vegas is saying, we're only going to spot them a half game. House, what are your thoughts? This is one of my favorite overs of the entire upcoming season. And all of it is because of the respect that I have for Quinn Snyder. We had a conversation earlier today. Why do we, why do we think that Quinn Snyder chose this situation rather than waiting and seeing what other kind of opportunities came up? And his wife loved Atlanta. Well, this like loved it. It's literally the answer, right? (laughs) That's the answer. It makes more sense than the other answers that would be basketball related, but <laughs> happy wife, happy life. Um, it's like when Kyle opens a bar in Poughkeepsie, same thing. She loved it there. Kyle, if you do that, I'm honestly going to kill you. <laughs> anyway, house. Do I over? The great thing about bar ownership is that when you can finally afford one, you're like, I shouldn't do this. <laughs> I'm too old. <laughs> you well. Wait, how late are these nights? You've learned. It's a bad investment. The Z tapes are they've been light the last couple Sundays. Speaking of bad investment, okay. Do we believe that Quinn Snyder can make Murray and Trey Young work? So you haven't committed to an over and under yet. I said, oh, you said over. Okay. Not, right. It's one of my favorite overs on the on the entire board. And I love the idea of of them, you know, potentially at those odds, uh, winning the division because, you know, something could go south with that Miami situation. And my and and Atlanta is well poised to fill in there. Getting rid of John Collins was addition by subtraction. Uh, yeah, they they had too many guys and they had to fix the minutes. What do you have, Rosillo? I like the over here and I feel good about it. You know, I think they were kind of a mess again last year. Uh, look, I've covered all my Hawks thoughts. Yeah, but I think they should be good enough to get forty two wins in this conference. So. That's kind of what it comes down to. I mean, hell, the playoffs seem to be different because Trey will have these moments where he's still going to scare you a little bit. You know, I think we've learned that, whether it was the Boston series last year or New York. But, uh, I don't know, there's there's some weird numbers. You go through it, like Trey and Murray on the floor together is like only a positive, like 1.6 points better than the yeah. opposition mm-hmm. per 100. And you're like, hey, that's supposed to be a bigger number with those two guys. And then the way they would try to split them up, like I kept watching all the different stuff. All I think is like, 
you know, Hunter's going to be a little bit better, maybe a little bit more Jalen Johnson, maybe a little more Sadiq Bay, maybe not having Collins sit in the corner and miss shots. Like, that ended up being a salary dump, man, after all the years of what they could possibly get for him. Legitimate salary I just, dump. I think Quinn and the talent level, because I have, like, the talent on the team, that should be 42 wins for the Atlanta Hawks. So I think this is my single favorite over of all 30. I've wagered on it. I like them for the division at plus 220. I think they're going to be a top four seed. And I just really like the spot for them. Because so I think the saying? regular season. Boston, Milwaukee, Miami, or Boston, Milwaukee, Philly? I think Boston, Boston, Milwaukee, Cleveland. Cleveland. Atlanta, four. Wow. So wow. you'll have Atlanta over the, over the Knicks. Knicks, Miami, and Philly. Yeah. Well, it makes sense on your over unders. Like, if I, I go think, back and think about. I think they're this year's Sacramento, where I just think they're going to be a really good regular season team. The Quinn Snyder thing, even in the Boston series, you could feel it because Boston fucking killed them in the first two games. Mm-hmm. Those last three games were good games, and they tested Boston and they exposed some things that uh, I think, you know, came back to haunt the Celtics in the next couple rounds. But, um, Getting rid of Collins, who I like, was important because they had too many guys and nobody was happy. The capella Kongwu combo, that's a real fucking center combo. Those guys play together. They're like 22 and 19 a game. Like, they, you know, they have, I think they overwhelmed Miami in that playing game. Hunter, we'll see. Maybe it's A.J. Griffin in that wing spot. Maybe A.J. Griffin's even a better bet. I still like the Bogdanovich as the third guard with these guys. And, uh, and from Trey, this is like a, you know, he takes a lot of shit. I could see him having a huge year, and I and yeah, I think this is a hard team to play. We already know he can put up massive stats, but it's going yeah, to have to feel like. But can you not go? V- right. I think the most they've ever won was forty three. They had that run in the playoffs. Um, I like this team, and and the Quinn Steiner thing is the number one reason for me because I just don't think they had good coaching. I don't think Lloyd Pierce was a good coach. I don't think Nate McMillan was a good coach. I think Nate McMillan was better than Lloyd Pierce, who was terrible. But for the most part, this team just always looked like a mess to me. Maybe, but I also know this team loved going to the media telling everybody it was the coach's fault, too. That's true. So, from a Trey standpoint, I this feels like a fork in the road for him in a lot of ways this season. I know he's young. I know he's got years ahead of him, but you get to the point where you start developing bad habits as a player. And if you're just a good stats, mediocre team guy, you kind of just end up that way. You know, he's been in the league since 2018. So what are you? Can you make other guys better? Is it just everything has to be built around you? How do you measure success? I just think this team's going to rise to the occasion. I like their rebounding. I like Bay on this team too. So you think he... He figures out how to be the guy where it's not just the numbers where it's like everybody's. Yeah, like pick your spots. Yeah. And that's where like somebody like Quinn Snyder, I think, could really help him. Right? The quiet... Sometimes it's not great for us if you take 31 shots. Right? I know you had 40 tonight, but, you know, uh, this and this and this didn't happen. Maybe so. the, the, you know, Patty Mills doing some veteran stewardship. I'll tell you another thing for the chalkboard, for the whiteboard for Atlanta. I wanted my big FanDuel boost this year, which I've won the last two years. I wanted it to be Celtics 50 plus wins, Lakers 45 plus wins, and Atlanta 40 plus wins. And it's like the way it gets boosted would be around plus 250 when we, when we end up doing it. And they asked if I could replace Atlanta with OKC because they said Atlanta was not a popular team with the betting public. Put that on your whiteboard, Atlanta. Well, you, they're like, down. put OKC in there. OKC is a little more lovable. <laughs> People don't want to bet on Atlanta. Maybe that was they, an actual, actual like- gambling take from FanDuel. Well, it's their book, so they, it's their number. So you can't blame them. Like, they just said Atlanta. People are like, eh. Feel tiny, like they know it. Tiny eh. juice on the over. Minus 112 on the over. All right. We're all going over on Atlanta. That's definitely going to be a lock for me. Well, now it gets interesting. Well, we have three teams left. You know what? Actually, let's do Charlotte first, we'll, and then we'll finish with Orlando. I thought and Washington. you said it gets interesting. Well, that's I'm going to get Charlotte out of the way. Charlotte's over under is thirty one and a half. No, Kai Jones. So Kai Jones is gone. 
gone. And the over-under did not move. Has anyone ever requested a trade and then been cut? <laughs> How about 30 for 30 about the Kai Jones book night draft? The 11th and 19th picks? Just 0 and 2. I like book night. I knew Kai Jones. It was limited. But like his journey over the last couple of months was fascinating. We'll leave it at that. The, the number didn't move. I predict his social media presence to maybe be even a little more extensive than it's been. So starting five of this team looks fine. LaMelo, Rogier, Brandon Miller, PJ Washington, and Williams. It's like, all right, that's solid on paper. The bench, it falls off a cliff. Hayward's probably their best bench guy. Um, This was a, a violent under for me. And then it's been a sexy analytics team. Pretty much everybody is saying over for this. So the over 31 and a half. I just don't personally see it. What do you think, House? I'm on the over, and I think it's because last season I, I'm treating as a as an aberration. I they're think. 27 and 55, and Lamelo missed at least half the season. I think that they're the team, you know, a couple of years ago that that uh, what did they win? 43 wins in 2021, 22, and then 38 wins. Yeah, I forgot to mention the the bridges coming back. So you could say four of the five starters from the 43 win team from two years ago are back. But the the conference was also worse two years ago. Right. Because when you go, all right, LaMelo played 36. Hayward played 50. Although, what do you yeah, really think? Pencil that. Pencil the 50 in every year for right. Hayward. <laughs> That's true. Bridges plays zero. You're like, wait. But if you go back to two years ago and then won 43, I thought that was one of the most impressive seasons anyone had in the league. Yeah, you were I, saying that at the time. You were like, like this team is the all-time overachieve. This is unbelievable. a 25-win team. The, they're in all these games in the yeah. fourth quarter. That's why like, I just thought it was like, of course, Jordan would be like, oh, Borrego, we got to move on. But like, Do you realize what this guy has helped yeah. you do? And, you know, LaMelo playing 70 games means what? I mean, he has been statistically better than I thought he'd be. He's more fun. He's he's in a weird lane where he's like a rock star of a player because of the way he plays and the personality and the, and the social media and pieces of it. But you know, Melo Ball is a problem. Hashtag problem. <laughs> but clearly, like there needs to be something else to his game to to round out like wins or losses here. And he's he's kind of avoided all of this stuff. Like he's gotten all the good parts. Yeah, but. I think there's a lot some of the, appalling playmaking right. at the end of games, like so, appalling. I don't, I don't know. Like I imagine him being around for the full season. It's weird because for me, the first time I was like, "Oh my god, it's a 30. and then I started digging into it a little bit more. I was like, "Am I actually going to say over for the Hornets?" And I'm not. The Miles Bridges piece too, where he's going to be playing again, and it's going every he's going to go in every city, and there's going to be a big story in the newspaper, and it's going to be a sports radio thing, and. I don't know, players that can go either way with how it affects people. I where, think so that's fifty fifty to me. Cause I don't on think on him. I don't think anybody gives a shit about the Charlotte Hornets. Well, that's that might be a, true. A, a, they're not coming to town and there's a story about this, I, this guy with He hasn't his, played in two years and um he's gonna be one of the most villainized guys in the league. And how that affects him, I guess we'll see. Just talk about it from gambling purposes. I understand. Um I bet it hard. When it was at 30 and a half, it's at the book right now at 31 and a half. It's still an over for God me. I think it. they Why have didn't you seven. tell me? I would have talked to you out of this. No, no, no. I, I think they have seven guys that can play. And 30 is such a low bar. I, I, I'm For them to it. hit this, Brandon Miller has got to be good immediately. So, Rosillo, I defer to you. Well, um... Because I, I think that's the way they hit Like, it. yeah, right. That's exactly... That's, he's, that's like, the, legit good. Like, even, like, a little better than Keegan Murray last year in the Kings. And I think he's going to be really good. Well, so then maybe they hit it. But by the way, Bridges played in 21-22. He played 80 games, and he was awesome. He was 20 points a game. Yeah, 27-4. and four. Yeah. yeah, The season he missed was last season. He didn't miss been, two seasons. He's, yeah, he's been 35% from <laughs> He's going to make three $40 million dollars a year. All right, so you guys are going over? I think I just switched it to over. I can't definitely believe over. it. I, I just am. did it. I'm going under. I just can't live with myself otherwise. All right, now it gets fun. The Orlando Magic. Steve Ceruti in the house for this. He flew cross country just so we can talk to him about the Orlando Magic over under of 37 and a half. That's not the only reason he flew across country. We also wanted to see him. Wanted to feed him. Plus 900 for the division. Just mentioning that. Plus 172 for the playoffs. Last year, they're 34 and 48. 
in the house. It's only four more wins and they hit the over. What do you got? I'm not just saying this because Rudy's sitting here. I like the over. Okay. I like this team. All right. I, this is also one of these ones where their best player just was on a massive stage. Both of them. The well, two best players. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. One's better than the other, though. France. France is better. Yeah, France is better. We There's no argument, right? Nah, right there's now. No argument, but I think there's an argument. I think Paolo's going to be awesome. He's going to be awesome. Franz is better right now. Part yeah, Paolo's of, 20 years old. Yeah, that's part of the thesis for why there's a leap still for Paolo. Yeah. And he got that time. He was on that stage. Well, we found out in the world championships that him as a five is the destiny of Paolo, but that's probably two, three years away with the with the with the muscle and stuff. Rosilla, what do you got for this? 37 and a half. Because they're still so young, I was like, wait, I don't can you get you know, 38, 39 wins out of this team. But you know what? I started thinking about it. Like, if I'm that high on Paolo, like, the second year guys that are special, like, that's kind of when it happens. And they played so many teams so tough, and they still didn't really know what the rotation is. And I think they may just collectively be like, hey, we know we drafted a lot of you guys. And again, that's sort of the Anthony Black, Suggs, Cole Anthony, Markel Fultz, like, who's getting the opportunity? I don't like the Howard pick at all. But Franz and Paolo are that good. They just are. And so I was going to say, I was going to say under, but I'm going over. I was leaning toward under, as I told Saruti before the podcast, but I, I have too many unders. And at 37 and a half, I need one more over. If they were 30 wins, I go, man, that's, that's a pretty big leap. Like, think about all the times you were watching them late in the year. We're like, they've figured something out well, here. You I and I were this. talking during the year, like we're, we were saying like, man, if there's one team that's better than their record, it's probably Orlando. They were in a, they had big wins against good teams. They lost some last second games. It worries me with the guards because you have. But they might just say, screw it and be like, we're, we're done pretending that this is an equal opportunity position thing this many years. I think in. that would be smart. Suggs, well, Anthony. Anthony Black and Fultz. And Fultz is in a contract year. And I actually Fultz liked what I saw from Fultz last year. I think Fultz... So Rudy's the Fultz is good guy and he's yeah. been right about it for a long time. And Jonathan Isaac potentially coming back. I'm going to go over only because I think those two guys are going to play the, for six months and give a shit the whole time and be in games and have a couple nice big wins. It just worries me. It looks a little too obvious. I think we won. We picked the over last year, didn't we? We did. Yeah, we hit it. One of our locks, I'm pretty sure. We hit it. We loved Orlando last year. So this is a Palo Franz bet. I also really like Franz for most improved because I think that could. No, insulting that is a Cerruti. No, I'm. Remember SGA won that year when he jumped to like 27 points a game? And he was already good, but then he had that stat jump. Right. And could Franz have a stat jump like that? I don't know. You'd have to be the only guy and have the ball every time. His most improved odds, I think, the only reason I liked it was because they were, they were pretty high. They were, um, yeah, like Austin Reeves is better. Yeah, he's 30 to one for most improved. I could see it. All right, Saruti, what do you got? I mean, they started five and 20 last year. That was mostly. Five and 20. Five and 20. And that was mostly because Fultz was out. And they were like, hey, Franz and Paolo run the show. And they, they weren't really ready to do it. They finished 29 and 28. I mean, that's, that's on pace to be the sixth seed, the seventh seed. And the conference is worse. I think that middle area is a little bit, because it's that middle area is dense. There's a lot of teams that are kind of the same. The Pacers are in there. I mean, I, their, their best case scenario is like maybe Brooklyn, uh, Chicago, maybe Toronto. Two of those teams maybe just drop off. And they get into the play-in. I mean, their number is higher than Toronto's number. Yeah. The issue is they still struggle to score. And they still don't. I mean, I've been saying this since 2010, it feels like. They just don't have enough shooting. And they, I don't, maybe Jet Howard solves that. I, people didn't like that pick. I don't know. I'll, I'll wait to see what it's like. The number seems right. 37 and a half seems right around where they'd win. But, I mean, every play-in team last year was had 40 wins. So, yeah, I, I, I think it's more likely they win 40 games than it is they win, like, 33. So I, I, you know, I'm a, I'm biased, but I, I would, I would lean over. 
There's a piece of it where I just want to root for it because I know I'm going to love this team as a league pass team. It'll be a top five for me, and I don't want to be in the back of my head rooting for the under. But I believe in the Franz Palo combo, just being a bitch to play over the course of six months. Because we're going to have that that uh, that turn midseason tournament in December, and somebody weird is going to end up in there out of the eight, and it's going to be a team like this that just has two young players. And I think the cool thing, too, is those guys are willing teammates. Like, they've yep. already gotten past the stuff that maybe frustrates me with other young guys where the only way they think they can contribute is by shooting. I don't... I don't feel like I'm betraying Steve Kerr. He he was so impressed by Paolo and just thought the guy's going to be a beast. And he probably said that publicly, but I think that whole coaching staff was like, Jesus, holy mackerel. Like, what is this guy going to be? Because they all, they all think he's going to be a five. I don't know how many years down the road it is, but when you think like he's can't even legally drink yet, um, what's he going to look like down the road? The, the beating people off the dribble stuff last year from him was just breathtaking. We talked about it a lot. There's going to be a physicality to him as he gets bigger and as he puts on muscle. And then the Franz piece, like, I, I don't know how good that guy can be, but he would be on the short list of who can jump up and suddenly become an all-star. The stuff he was doing, I know is the world championships, but the stuff he was doing was like really high level. Like they were running everything through him. That's the, the, the poise point is the thing. To yeah. Me. And then that's what, you know, Sarudi's observation about how that team was a winning, had a winning record for a sustained run. That's because Franz Wagner has the poise. They could run. They're going to rebound too. The shooting is going to be the issue. And, and, you know, I, to me, it's more likely somebody like Suggs is just all of a sudden better than he was last year. Or Fultz and a contract year, whatever it is. Uh, so we're all going over. We're going over. Sarudi, you're, you're like too afraid to go over. What could go wrong? I think the number's really right. Okay. Well, the number's really right for our last team of the preview, <laughs> the Wizards of Washington. <laughs> 23 and a half. Last year, they were 35 and 47. They are 13 to 1 to make the playoffs house. Here's the starting five, as far as I could tell. Tyus Jones, who's just on eBay right now. Just like, does anyone want to trade for a point guard who's been in some big games? Jordan Poole. Who Kevin Garnett um, unironically asked, could he be used like James Harden on Houston? It was an actual <laughs> podcast moment. Corey Kispert, who has some nice, nice uh, shooting percentages. Kyle Kuzman just got paid in Gafford. This team is awful house. Why do you think they can go over? Because this team is not any worse than the team that the Washington franchise put on the floor last season. Talent-wise, this team, I would argue... The 35-win last year team. But that's that team right. had Porzingis scoring 23 a game. Well, and Beal. Kuzma, they had 40 games of Beal last season. He So part of House's premise is Poole can replace a lot of the Beal stats. He can replace all of them. Um, He'll certainly replace the field goal attempts. Kuzma was the guy who got the touches <laughs> at the end, end of the game, not uh, yeah. Porzingis. And that, it was proper. He, win, he, winning he, recipe there. He's a lot more... The problem, the reason that I love this is because 23 and a half is so low. Yeah. It's so, you, you, they have three guys that are professional guys that are auditioning for their next situation. Tyus Jones, Jordan Poole, Kyle Kuzma. They're not motivated. The big three. They're not motivated to go stink, though. They're, like, competent. They're not incompetent. And DeLon Wright is going to be a tremendous asset for somebody. Look at that guy's advanced metrics. for Corral the Bob always loved him. He he gets his hands on balls, you know, uh, better than a Kardashian. It's an amazing <laughs> skill set. He's, he's tremendous at this. Don't sleep on my guy, Koulibaly. <laughs> Bilal Koulibaly. Yeah. They actually, I think this new regime play. in Washington hit a draft pick. Yeah, it this does seem like it. This dude is crazy long. Has tremendous poise. He played with Wemby all year last year. He's not afraid of nothing. He be- thinks he belongs on a professional basketball. There is court. some some quotes coming out about him from the players and coaches that are like reminiscent of the baby Rhino stuff with Jalen Carter and the Eagles, sure. where the teammates are like, "This guy, Jesus, <laughs> holy mackerel, they suck, dude." They I don't. Suck. I don't. <laughs> they do I don't. suck. Don't misunderstand. Twenty four <laughs> wins is a W, though. 24 yeah. wins. House, you're not getting to 20. Here's the reason. You won't get to 20 wins. They 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 will 
start tanking at the trade deadline when yeah. most of these guys are gone. They're going to go gone. like two for but twenty-eight. There are fifty-five games between the start of the season and the and the and the trade deadline. So uh, if they win twenty, this is the first time I've ever been 30, worried about you as a Washington basketball fan. If they go twenty and thirty through the first, they're not 50 doing games, that. Why not? Why can't they? Because they're not good. They don't have any. <laughs> they're there's not, not even like a possible all star in this team house. Well, Jordan Poole begs to differ. And he's going to show what are you, you talking about? Jordan Poole is going to show you that that he's got he was just they were holding back. Steve Kerr and Draymond were holding back in, in Golden State. I actually think Jordan Poole, now that Dinwiddie looks like he's not gonna have the ball enough, Jordan Poole is gonna be our number one his teammates hate playing with him guy. <laughs> That's my prediction. I like that I read an article on Hoops Hype that Danilo Gallinari said he couldn't wait to play the Celtics. Oh, revenge like, game with Gallo? What are you mad about? Yeah, they did the f- tell him that he was staying. <laughs> How about Johnny Davis? You didn't mention him. He's an unmentionable. How's you missed on like five straight first round picks until Koulibaly. It's a whole Wait, new thing. We don't even know that that's a hit yet. I, but it, but I'm, I'm just at least giving it a do not know. Kispert. I kind of like Kispert, but didn't they take him like ninth? Took him too high. Yeah. He can shoot, though. Rosillo, is this 2024 stealth trade machine team? Feels like there's going to be a lot of trade machine action with this team. Yeah, but I don't know, like, what do I want? I don't want Poole's contract, and I don't know that I want Poole in a me-against-the-world Tupac season. You know? That's I, the other part I of know, it. I and, know. and Koulibaly's going to do whatever he wants to do. So, based on watching him play, I like Gafford. Kuzma's actually been pretty good for him. You know, and, yeah. and he got paid, and maybe there's something there. But, yeah, I think a lot of teams will call about Tyus Jones. Um, I think you know, Poole's I on know. the team the whole season, just for the record. I think, I think oh, with I that think contract, he yes. Yeah. Yeah. He, if he plays really well, though, and his shooting percentages are, are close to what – because he, sh- he shoots – Then keep him. That, right, we keep him. And maybe he's, he's either a cornerstone <laughs> piece as you grow. Or I, I hate to break it to you. His contract you're, you're keeping him either way. No, his contract is going to look good in a year. If he's a cornerstone, you're keeping him. If he's not a cornerstone, you're not going to be able to trade him. I think they are he's going to be able life. to trade him. The three people in your life for the next few years are your wife, your son, and Jordan Poole. <laughs> That's how it's going to play out. I'll invite and maybe him over. me. He can have Chipotle. We like Chipotle at, my, <laughs> at the house household. Uh, I just don't see it. I'm going uh, hard under. Possible you're locking lock. it? Possible fine, lock. Fine. Go ahead. I don't I think, think I'd they lock get the first, it. They, they get the pole position in the lottery with this team. I don't see a worse team. Many professional players. They, they're over, under. is four you wins. You're, you're, you're comparing it to like Hinky Sixers experiments. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what's throwing you off here. This, they're better than the Spurs. House, they're going to be more competitive than Portland. House, your over under is four wins lower than every other team in the league. I think that's a mispricing. This is fascinating. Now we've got some serious Wizards you think takes. He's realistic with the with the Wizards too. I also, yeah, I think the Something's other thing going is on that with House, I, they, I, I, you're we got to talk. Like, There's tonight. nothing here that's core. There's nothing here that's like, hey. You know, even with Wembenyama, San Antonio, even last year when they were tanking, they were still running stuff offensively. They were, like, doing things. Yeah. I think Detroit actually planned on being a lot better than they were last year, but then Cade goes yeah. down for the— There's not one guy on this Wizards roster where I think they're going to be like, well, we got to make sure we set the standard immediately, even though it's mm. a really good front office. Who's your coach, has? Um, Until junior. Did you have to check? <laughs> no, I, I I knew it was. I, I wanted to make sure I didn't say Bickerstaff because we had a long run with Bickerstaff. He's the other worst coach in the East. West Until Jr. is the worst coach in the East. And then oh. Bickerstaff is the second worst coach in the East. All right, I'm going to recap our over-unders. And then we're going to do locks. Celtics, 54 and a half. We all went over. Sixers, 47 and a half. All went under. Knicks, 45 and a half. Three overs. Nets, 37 and a half, all under. Toronto, 36 and a half. I went over. House went over. Rosillo under. Miami Heat. I went over. What did you do on that one? I didn't write it down, Rosillo. Over. And you're over as well, House? Yes. Okay. Three overs for the Heat. Then the Atlanta Hawks. We were kind of giddy about them. Three overs. 
Orlando Magic, 37 and a half, three overs, but I think probably because Saruti was here. If Saruti wasn't, there's an alternate universe where Saruti's not here and maybe we're arguing more about the Magic. I did change fine. my mind on it. That's fine. Charlotte, 31 and a half. Russell and House went over. I went under it. I don't feel great about it. I but, don't feel great about the over. Yeah, I, did, I just, don't, I just wish they weren't in the league. Washington, 23 and a half. Lock. Under for me and Rosillo, over for House. So there you go. All right. It's time for the locks. House, what do you have for, for locks out of the 30 teams? How many are we doing? What's the right you number? You can do one. You can do three. You can do five. I'm probably doing six. You're doing six. My God. Well, I did seven last year. I think I went six and one. I'm good at these. My locks. Best there ever is, man. One of the best. Uh, Atlanta over is a lock for me. Is that a lock for you, Rosillo? Not a lock. Okay. Let's not lose our minds here. Oh, well, it's a lock for me, and it might be one of my favorites. What else, House? Um, I can't, I can't do the, the, the um, Hornets, but I really want to do it. But I'm not going to do it. Just do it, you wuss. I'm not going to do, do it. Do it, you coward. I love the Pacers. The Pacers is a lock for me. Okay. Um, they're a lock for me as well. Add me to the list. Okay. We love wow. some Pacers wow. basketball on this podcast. All right, Tyrese. That was my favorite one. It's a good one. It's too low. It's too, too low. low. We're all in agreement. It's too low. House? Who else? Um, I am on the Suns under. That's a lock for me. Oh. I'm not, I mean, we did it last year. Eddie, you know, made, made, makes fun of the podcast for it. It's fine. I'm going to do, man, I'm not going to do a lock. I really like that under though for them. Who, Phoenix? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's good. It's really good, I'm but I, I'm not going to lock it because I don't feel as strongly about it as the other ones, but I really like that one. All right, what else, House? This, I'm only going to do four. It's yep. the Clippers can forever fuck off lock of the year. <laughs> the Clippers is a lock under for me. Okay. Rosillo? Uh Denver over lock. Okay. 52 and a half. New Orleans over lock. Oh. 44 and a half. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pacers over. Yep. And I'm just staying positive here. Miami over. Okay. And then Dallas over. No net, no unders. I don't want to be amazing. negative. Dallas over. That's yeah. amazing. This year. Positive up, guy. You're up to something. How many did you just do? You did five. I want to add one more. Okay. Boston over. <laughs> I do believe in Boston. I, I Looking down at okay. my notes, I left it off. The Boston over. I love the Boston over. I'm just stupefied by Dallas for you, Rosillo. So you're, say, you're saying Kyrie's going to have a normal season? No, no. I would never guarantee okay. that. I just think that it's just Luka, a blind Luka bet. It would be a blind Luka, kind of like everything they did around it. And he comes in more motivated than ever before after last season being that disappointing. My locks are, weirdly, I have, I think, all overs. Lakers over 47 and a half. Oklahoma City over 44 and a half. I'm really jealous of House's Phoenix under, but I'm not going to do it. I am going to do under for Portland at 27 and a half because I think that team is built to not be good this year. I have the Atlanta over 41 and a half. I have the Miami chip on their shoulder over 44 wow. and a half. Us against the world. Fuck you. 45 and 37 season. I also have the Indiana over 38 and a half. And I would have had the Philly, but it dropped enough that I don't feel like it's a lock because if Embiid just plays, they were so good last year that there, there's a world where they figure their shit Maxie, out. Maxie, even if Harden's yeah, throwing yeah, around. I'm just, yeah. I, that's a stay away to me. Um, I really want to do Washington as an under lock. <laughs> Should we just do that as a fuck you to house? Yeah, put me down. Go All ahead, right, I'm down fine. too. It's fine. I'm I didn't. I did not give my Washington pick as a lock. All right. Me and Russell are under 23 and a half lock. Fine. The Wizards. It's fine. Every W I'm sending you. I'm going to create a, 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 a Twitter Sick. X handle for it. 